Welcome to Across the Desk. This week, some interesting things happening in the realm of education with our legislature. As I'd mentioned a couple of episodes ago, the State Board of Education, on a four to three vote, decided to give tens of millions of dollars in public school funding to charter schools. Well, that hasn't set well for some people and it's actually spurred the legislature into action. Not only that, as I researched that particular happening, I also came across a couple of other really interesting bills that are going through the legislature when it comes to education in the state of Oklahoma. So a couple of weeks ago, on a 4-3 to three vote, the State Board of Education decided to move a bunch of money out of public education into school building improvements for charter schools. Well, this didn't sit well with a lot of people, and several think that it was an illegal move, and definitely unconstitutional, as here we have several unelected officials deciding how our tax dollars are going to be spent, which is absolutely unconstitutional as one thing it's the legislature that holds the purse strings and the most very important point is they're unelected officials deciding how our money's going to be spent this is a such a rallying cry I hear on the right so often that you know there's got all these unelected officials deciding stuff you know you hear that all the time from them well we're just gonna let unelected officials decide things well you know here they are allowing unelected officials to decide how to spend tens of millions of our dollars. And several people, Republicans included, who absolutely are going to stand on this principle, I suppose, are saying that's wrong. So, the Senate, in all of their due diligence and everything else, have put forth a bill. Well, actually, this bill had been put forth earlier, but it really spurred this one into action. And it's Senate Bill 229. And what it has to do with is the funding of public charters and their buildings. So in it, it changes the formula up. So that way we're not taking tens of millions of dollars out of public education like the board wants to do. Instead, we're going to shore that up with a funding formula that still keeps that money into public education. But we have a separate fund for these charter schools. And a majority of it, or part of it, can be paid for out of the tax money that we're receiving from the medical marijuana tax, which I believe is a great thing. It's probably something that we would want it to go for. So I see that as, you know, hey, yeah, that's a really good compromise as to what the State Board of Education wants to do. And really, I shouldn't even say compromise. I think that's, I think that's gross on its face. There should be no compromise with people who have no practical experience in education like Trent Smith deciding how our taxpayer monies are to be spent. He is not an elected official. He's not. He was appointed to the board by the governor. Now the governor is an elected official, but the guys he appoints aren't. And they don't get to decide how the money is to be spent in our state. That's just how it goes. But this bill here it does. It does have a good formula and a way to pay for that, and it's probably needed. And we probably can do it with the money we're making from the medical marijuana industry because it's doing pretty good, and those revenues continue to increase. And I believe it's a way we can alleviate this problem without having to raid public education to support these public charters. Now the next bill I want to talk about is Senate Bill 271. Now this bill hasn't really gotten real far. I think it's been referred to the Education Committee, but they haven't voted it out of committee yet and we'll have to see what the legislature does with it. It may just die in committee. Hopefully it will because this is a pretty draconian bill. Now a guy named Zach Taylor He's, he's the author of this bill, and it's about disciplining students and the rights or the putting a law necessary so that teachers, staff, any staff, can punish a student for wrongdoing. Now, we should have disciplinary measures in school for disruptive students. I do not disagree with that. But one of the things I found interesting in this is a couple of things. One, Zach Taylor himself. Zach Taylor... Let's, again, like Trent Smith, his practical experience in education is 
he has one. So he has an education in aviation management. That's what Zach Taylor has. His occupation is listed as a partner in RKR Exploration. Well, what do they do? Well, they're, you know, they're a gas and oil exploration company. So that's what he does. That's his whole practical experience in this, is he's an oil guy with a degree in aviation management. There you go. That's his whole practical experience. So he puts in this bill on disciplining kids at school. Hey, you know, and this isn't just for any particular district because they're usually able to decide their own punishment. This is statewide. He wants this whole state to follow this formula. Educators, licensed educators, learned educators to do this. What he wants to do when he's not a licensed educator has nothing to do in the education industry, department, or whatever, and his only practical experience in it is he has an education. That's pretty much it. But what I find so draconian about this bill is there's a section in here, and it's pretty big in this new bill on it, and it's on corporal punishment. Yeah, you heard me right, paddling students. I thought we got away from that. I thought we got away from doing that. You know, some districts do, and, and, and they may be able to decide that if that's what the parents all decide. They come together and say, yeah, man, we think that's a good formula for our district, where we're at, and that's what we want. Okay, I don't... I, I may disagree with it, but, you know, if that's what a district wants in that area, maybe so. Maybe so. Maybe they'll look into it more. But to blanket that off in a statewide event is just kind of weird to me. It makes it sound like this guy really, yeah, well, he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know anything about education. He doesn't know it. So, and disciplining kids. There's a, there, there are whole courses on this in school if you're going to be a teacher on how to handle kids psychologically, mentally, how to lead them. There's a whole deal on that. And this guy doesn't know anything about it. But here he is putting out a bill on punishments of kids if they disobey and the corporal punishment. Now, the interesting thing here is it says, hey, you know, the principal gets to decide if it's corporal punishment, but there are some cases where a principal doesn't need to be involved if a teacher so decides that he wants to paddle a student. Okay, I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, but anyway, the other we're going to go on deeper here because I think the even more outlandish part is when it comes to parents. See, if you're a parent and your kid gets paddled, you don't have a say. You don't get a say in that. They just get to paddle your kid. As a matter of fact, the only way you're going to find out about it is if your kid tells you about it. And the only way you're going to get any information from the school is if you send a written request to them saying, hey, I want to know about this. And of course, they're not going to call you. They're not going to talk to you or anything else. They're too cowardly to do that. He's Zach Taylor, not, not the administration, but Zach Taylor is too big of a coward to understand that. So what does he put in there? Well, we'll respond to you by letter. We won't talk to you. We won't meet with you. I'm not going to call you. I'll write you a letter back because I just can't handle that kind of confrontation. And that's what you get with people like Zach Taylor. So you're going to get this little mealy thing like that where, hey, man, we're going to paddle your kid. And the only way you're going to know about it is if the kid tells you. And then, hey, if you want any information, well, you can send us a written request and we'll give you one back. And so that's basically this rule here. Now, the one thing I find so cynical about this is that people like Zach Taylor know that when kids get punished, it's kind of an embarrassing event. When people are abused or beat up or anything else, it's embarrassing for them. They really don't want to tell people about it. So the chances that a kid who isn't totally mentally developed, who has been physically punished by an adult, a group of, and, and you got another adult standing there, so you've been, you've been thoroughly punished by adults bigger than you with more power. That's scary. Are you going to tell your parents? Probably not. Most people don't. If they, if they don't have to, now, hey, because that's the deal, right? Because the parent isn't going to know about it unless the kid says something. So if the kid doesn't tell the parent, the parent's not going to know. How would they know? And so to the kid, hey, man, I might get in trouble if I tell my parents. I'm going to feel embarrassed if I tell my parents. So most likely that kid, he's not going to tell his parents about the incident. But you know what? People like Zach Taylor, that's exactly what they're counting on. They're exactly counting on that so that they can keep implementing these types of draconian, barbaric disciplinary practices upon children.
Now, and it goes deeper than that. This is just such a display of conservative cowardice. It's not even funny. Because one thing is, in Zach Taylor's deal here about the parents and, and, and just letting you know everything, it, it, it just, it's, it's just icky. I'm just going to say, because, you know, he knows this. He knows they're not going to say anything. He knows they're just going to keep perpetuating this. And this is all the way to stick it to people that he disagrees with. He thinks your kids should be paddled if they do something wrong. Maybe he doesn't have kids. Maybe his kids are already, he doesn't care. He doesn't care about your kids. He also doesn't care about how you raise your kids, which is a weird thing. Because you can tell this is part of the cowardice that I'm talking about. He wants to be able to dish it because you see him, hey man, kids should have a right to go to any school they want. Parents should have a right to teach their kids how they want. They should have the instruction they want to give them. They believe in all this free choice stuff, except when it comes to something like this. Then he changes his total tune on it, right? So it's like he likes to dish it, but he's just way too big of a coward to take it when it comes to allowing parents to decide how their kids will be educated and in this case disciplined he thinks your kids should be disciplined with or without your permission and with or without your knowledge not only that you should only be knowledged by a written request when and, and that, that's just so ugh, that's just so infuriating to me as a parent because I am a parent I don't want anybody paddling my kid, not without my knowledge. Now, if there's a if there's a situation to where maybe that's just what she needs, okay, I might see that. But one, I'm going to be present when that's done. No one's going to do it without my presence. No one is going to physically do harm to my kids without me or my wife present. That's just how that's going to happen. If you do, I'm going to come for you. I'm just am. I'm going to do whatever I can by legal means, by any means, to come for you. I will. Because that's my family that you're messing with. And if things like this happen, and that's what happens with this bill, because I really hope it doesn't even make it out of committee, because it's so draconian. But if it does, people like Taylor, they're really going to be on my list. Especially if someone does harm to my daughter. And I really hope he doesn't have kids. Because that just... That just tells me what kind of parent he is. It's kind of disgusting. But anyway, that's what you get with Senate Bill 271. And let's just hope it doesn't see the light of day outside of a committee room. Now, there's another bill by Senator Nathan Dom here, 662. Senate Bill 662. And again, Nathan Dom, another really kooky guy who just has these kooky bills that we hope don't see the light of day outside a committee room. And again, this one's tied up in committee. Uh, we'll see if it ever gets out. Hopefully it doesn't. Hasn't had any votes yet. Hasn't even brought, brought up. I hope they look at this and go, kooky, set it out. Put it to the side. If it comes up and it comes up, we've got better things to look at. Because this one's on science education. And it talks about how you can teach science education in our schools. Yeah, we're talking, you know, yeah, creation, intelligent design, all that stuff as scientific theories. Because Nathan Dom wants you to be, I don't know, uh, unscientific. Because he's always talking about here, hey, we need to also talk about the problems with science and how it's wrong. That's the other thing. Because, you know, people like Nathan Dom, they're anti-science. He's an anti-vaxxer, doesn't believe in it. If I can't see it, it's not real unless it's Jesus or God or something, then I believe in it. Oh, and you need to believe in Jesus too. And as a matter of fact, it was Jesus that created all this. So there's your scientific truth. There's your scientific observation, hypothesis, experimentation, analysis, and conclusion right there. And if a teacher wants to teach that, they should not be in trouble for it. That's what he says in his bill. That's what he does. It's kooky, it's crazy, it's way outlandish, and it'll probably never see the light of day. But that's what you get with Senator Nathan Dom. And just like the guy last week, we get these crazy bills from him because why? Well, he doesn't pull a challenger. No one challenges Nathan Dom. He doesn't he just walks right into a seat because no one recruits a Democrat to run against him. So hey, why shouldn't he put out crazy bills like this if no one's gonna challenge him? You know what? I mean, quite honestly. I wouldn't. If I'm not being challenged, I'm going to put out every crazy thing I can think of. Why not? Who's going to tell me no, right? So that's what you get with Senator Nathan Dom and crazy bills like Senate Bill 662. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Across the Desk and some of the education things that are going on with our legislature, our state government, and obviously our state boards. Anyway, hopefully some of these things will happen, like figuring out a funding formula for charter schools, and hopefully some of them won't, like being able to paddle your child without your consent and telling your kids that intelligent design is the correct way and science is wrong. Anyway, this is Across the Desk with Kit Fairchild, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.